The Preaching of Andrew the Blessed And when the disciples went out into the world to preach the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, the Lord appeared unto them, and spake unto them, saying thus, Peace be unto you, zero my brethren, and my beloved. Heirs of the kingdom. Know that I will never separate myself from you, I will strengthen you. And he turned to Matthias and commanded him to go to the city of the cannibals, and Andrew his brother was to pass to Lydda to preach in it, he and his disciple Philemon, the son of Philip, for I have many people in it whom I have chosen. And the disciples replied, saying, Be thou with us, O Lord! In every place whither thou hast commanded us to go. And the Lord gave them, the salutation of, peace, and ascended to heaven whilst they were looking at him. Thereafter Peter went to the place which the Lord had commanded him, to go to. And Matthias asked Andrew if he would allow his disciple Rufus and Alexander to go with him to Tintaran. But Andrew and Philemon went to Lydda. Now Philemon had a melodious voice, there was none like it, and he had learned wisdom by the strength of the Holy Spirit which rested upon him, and there was not one among the disciples superior to him in wisdom, except Peter and John. And when the disciples were gathered together, they chose these two men to stand and recite the praises, of God, that, men, might hear the sweetness of their voices. And Andrew went to Lydda, he and Philemon, for one half of the city had believed through the instrumentality of Peter, Acts 9:35, and the other half remained unbelievers. And Andrew came to the church of the Nazarenes which was in Lydda, and they went out to meet him with branches of trees in their hands, rejoicing, and he went into the church and sat down on the bishop's chair, and he commanded Philemon to mount into the pulpit, and recite the hymn Alleluia, and the congregation repeated it after him. And when the priests of the heathen heard the voice of the multitude, they said one to the other, What is going on in the city today? The people, answered them, A disciple of Jesus the Christ is in the church of the Nazarenes, teaching them and commanding them to reject the gods, and not to appear in the temple. And they took their swords and appeared in the church that they might listen, so that, if they, the Christians, should insult their gods they might kill them. And they heard the sweetness of Philemon's voice reading and saying thus, The gods of the nations are gold and silver, the work of men's hands. Having eyes, they see not, and ears, they hear not, and noses, they smell not, and feet, they walk not. They have mouths, and they speak not, and like unto them are they who worship them. PCXV. 4-8. And when the priests heard things like this in the speech of Philemon, and the sweetness of his voice, they wept and went into the church, and they embraced Philemon's feet. And when the congregation saw them, they said unto Andrew, Zero our father. These are some of the temple priests. And Andrew made a sign to the congregation to be silent until they had finished the praises, for they were greatly afraid of them, when they saw that they had swords, and they were silent till the song of praise was finished. And Andrew rose first and prayed for them. And when he had concluded his prayer he said to the temple priests, Sit down. And when they were seated, he said, O my children! whom I would embrace, whom I would have begotten, again, how have ye come today into this church? Every day, when the Nazarenes pass you, ye draw away your garments lest ye should touch theirs. The company of the priests answered him, saying, O our father Andrew! We will tell thee the truth. When we heard that thou wert come into this city to teach, and we listened to the voices of the multitude, we asked what was going on in the church of the Nazarenes today. And they told us that thou wert come to it, and we agreed one with the other, fifty thousand men of us, and we went as thou hast seen us to hear if they would insult our gods, that we might kill every man in the church. And now we have been present as thou seest us. And when we heard the sweetness of this youth's voice, our hearts were turned towards him, and we came unto thee. We ask thee, O disciple, that thou wouldst give us today what thou hast given to this congregation, that we may be worthy to approach thy God, and we shall be glad if we are not separated from this youth. And when Andrew knew this he kissed the head of Philemon, saying, Truly thou art he about whom the Holy Spirit spake aforetime, that a sweet voice shall gather the multitude to itself. Truly it is meet that thou shouldest be called a Saviour of souls. As the Lord hath changed our names and made others for us, so is it with thee also. And when Andrew saw the congregation, they thronged him, and, he commanded them to go to a wide place, and they went to the seashore. Andrew answered and said to the believers, Whoso amongst you desireth, to please, God, let him come and be bathed by my hand. 
and the multitude came, and he baptized them all in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, the one God. And the number of those who were baptized was four thousand and four hundred souls. And he baptized the fifty priests also. After this Satan came to the town, and, found two young men playing. One of them was the son of John, Sheik of the city, and the other was the son of a nobleman of the city. And whilst they were playing, the young man, the son of John, struck the other a blow, and, he straightway fell down dead. And his father laid hold of John and said unto him, Deliver to me thy child that I may slay him as he slew my child. And if not, I will deliver thee up to Rufus the governor, that he may kill thee in the stead of my son whom thy son hath slain. And John wept with a great weeping in the presence of the crowd, and the crowd said unto him, If money is desired of thee, we would pay it for thee, but it is thy life that is required. John said unto them, I desire not gold, from you, nor silver, but that one of you should give a pledge for my presence until I go to Andrew and Lydda, that he may appear and raise him from the dead. And the multitude gave a pledge to the father of the young man until John should go to Lydda to Andrew the Apostle of Jesus the Christ, so that he might come and make his son alive for him. And he replied to their speech, and sat down and mourned for his son. And John went to Andrew and found him baptizing the multitude. And he fell down and did obeisance unto him and said, Have pity on my age, let me not die. And Andrew raised him up and said unto him, Fear God, and be not afraid, tell me all that hath befallen thee. And he told him his misfortune. And Andrew replied to him, I cannot go with thee at this time, because of this multitude which I am baptizing, but take Philemon with thee, and he will raise the dead man. And he sent Philemon with him that he might raise him from amongst the dead. And the two went out towards the city. And as they were journeying, Satan took the likeness of an old man, and went to the governor of the city, and cried unto him, saying, O Rufus! Art thou sitting, and murdered people are thrown down in the streets of the city? Rise, and seek the murderer, and if not, lo! I appeal and go to the king, and will tell him of it. And when Rufus heard this speech, he arose in great wrath and commanded them to saddle his horse, and he rode, being very angry. And when the people of the city heard this, not one of them remained in it, save the dead man. Then John and Philemon approached, coming, from Andrew, and they found the multitude outside of the city. And they said unto John, Thou hast been long in coming, and we were afraid, and lo! The governor has made captive the city. And John wept, saying, Alas! What shall I do? The dead one is not buried. Philemon replied, Weep not, I will go and raise him. The multitude said unto him, Do not go into the city, that the governor slay thee not. Philemon said unto them, I am not able to oppose my master, nay, I will go and I will raise him up, as my teacher commanded. Sit ye down in your places, and if ye hear that I have been killed, send to my master, that he may appear and raise me up, me and the dead man. And Philemon entered the city, and went to, the place, where the governor was, and cried, saying, O Rufus! Thou dost rule this city to lay it waste. Where are the people of the city? They did not meet thee at thy entrance into it. And the governor heard his speech, and, he commanded, his soldiers to lay hold of him and hang him in the place of punishment. And he said unto them, Perhaps this is he who hath slain the dead man, and therefore his blood will not leave him alone. And the soldiers laid hold of him, and set him up in the place of punishment. And Philemon replied, O Rufus the governor! Do not torture me, for I am an infant, I have not sinned, and I do not deserve a condemnation. I am like our father Adam, when he was in paradise, before Eve came out of his side. Where is my master Andrew? That he may see what is being done to his disciple. Is there no pity in thy heart, O thou governor? When thou seest that I am an infant? Hast thou no child? That ye may have mercy on me? And as thou lovest thy son, so doth my father love me. And he turned his face towards the soldiers, and said unto them, Is there no merciful man amongst you, to have pity on me? and to go to Lydda, to my master Andrew, and tell him that his disciple has been set up for torture? And when the soldiers heard this, they wept because of the sweetness of his speech. He said also, Is there no bird in this city which I could send to Lydda to my master Andrew? 
that he may come and that I may see him before I die. And when he had said this, many birds assembled about him and they talked to him as they did to Noah of old. And they said unto him, Here we are, which of us dost thou wish to send? And a little sparrow came near him and said, I am lighter in body than these, I will go, and will bring thy master to thee. Philemon said unto him, Thou art a fornicator, thou wilt not hasten, thy, return, for if thou meet a hen of thy kind thou wilt stop with her, and wilt not hasten, thy, return. And the raven arose and said unto him, I will go. Philemon said unto him, The first time that thou wast sent thou didst not return with thy report to Noah who had sent thee, and I shall not send thee. And he called the dove, and said unto her, O, thou of, honourable race! Whom God hath called gentle beyond all other birds, who didst come with the news to Noah when he was in the ship, at the time of the flood, and the just one blessed her, go to Lydda, to my master Andrew and say unto him, Come and see thy disciple Philemon, for he is set up for torture. And the dove answered him, saying, Be strong, lo! Andrew will come, he is here, and he will hear thy speech. And when Rufus heard it, he arose in haste and loosed Philemon with his own hands from the torture and said unto him, Truly if there were ten murdered men in this city I would leave off inquiring about them for thy sake. And when Satan knew that Rufus had believed, he summoned his hosts, and said unto them, Rufus has believed, and he is our friend, and all the city disbelieve in us. And I command you that one of you shall go to the house of Rufus, and shall lay hold of his wife that she may become like a mad woman, with no sense in her, and incite her to attack her children, and kill them. And straightway Satan did what Iblis had commanded, and went to the house of the governor, and made his wife mad and incited her to kill her children. And when her servants knew what she had clone, they came together and laid hold of her, and put her into a strong place, and they sent to their master and told him of her state, and of the murder of her children. And the governor said unto those who were about him, If the house had fallen upon them and all who were in the court were dead, I would not forsake this boy. And Rufus the governor returned to Philemon, and said unto him, O my lord! Hast thou not heard what this messenger saith? I ask thee to go with me to my abode, and if thou wilt not go I will not go. Philemon replied to him, Let us finish what we are doing here, and after that we will go to the house. And Philemon called the dove, and said unto her, Go to the house of Rufus, and say to those in his abode, Do nothing in my house, till I am present. And the dove went, and brought the message. And when the crowd heard the dove speaking, they wondered greatly. And Philemon asked the governor to send and bring the people of the city, that he might raise the dead man. And the governor sent his soldiers to bring the multitude. And when they had approached, they went together to the place of the dead man. And they found Andrew within the city. Philemon said unto him, Come, O my master, that thou mayest raise the dead. Andrew said unto him, Truly it is thou who shalt raise him. And Philemon went to where the dead man was, and knelt upon his knees, and entreated the Lord thus. Hearken unto me, O Lord our God! The Good Shepherd, who will not leave us as a pledge in the hand of the enemy, but has delivered us by his pure blood. Hearken unto me, I am thy servant, I ask from the abundance of thy mercy that my prayer may be heard, and that this dead man may arise in the power of thy name. Then he lifted up his head, and stood, and cried with a loud voice, In the name of Jesus the Christ, the Nazarene, arise, zero dead man. And straightway the dead man arose. And when the crowd saw the dead man standing alive their faith in the Lord Jesus the Christ increased greatly. And Philemon told Andrew the state of the governor's wife and her deed to his children. And every one who was present went with Andrew and Philemon to the dwelling of Rufus, and the widows and the orphans followed them, hoping that they would receive alms. And when Andrew went to the governor's house, he found his son, and round him a great company weeping for him, and the dove standing at his head. And Andrew said unto the dove, what age art thou? She said unto him, Sixty years. Andrew said unto her, Since thou hast hearkened to the voice of Philemon my disciple, go out into the desert, and thou shalt be allowed to go free from the service of the people of the world, no man amongst men shall have power over thee. And she went out into the desert as he had commanded her. And Andrew called the dead man, saying, In the name of Jesus the Christ who has sent us into the world to preach in his holy name, arise, live and straightway the dead man arose, 
and did obeisance before Andrew. And he raised him up, and said unto him, Believe in God, O my son. And he replied, I have believed, and I ask thee, O my father Andrew. If thou wilt allow me to tell what I have seen? He said unto him, Speak. And the boy said unto his father, O my father. If thou wouldest give the half of what thou possessest to the orphans and to the widows and the poor, wilt thou not repay something of what is fitting for the gift of God which abides with thee? For what thou hast given to the needy, thou hast given it for thyself. No, O Father! In the hour when my mother rose up against me and slew me there was a great good in it for us. For people came to me who had wings like the eagles, and they took my soul to a place which is called Gehenna. And I looked at a large house being built with sulphur and pitch. And the number of the builders was thirty, and they had great burning lamps. And, some people, called out commanding them about the building. How long shall we build this house? We are commanded to set it on fire with these lamps. He said unto them, Will ye burn it before its building is finished? For by the time that its owner dies then you shall burn it. Said the angel who had charge of my soul, Hast thou seen these things? I said unto him, Yea, and I asked him for whom this house was built, and why it was built with sulphur and pitch. And he said unto me, These are the sins of thy father which he hath committed, and it will be built until the time when he shall die. They will toss him into it. One. And when I heard these things about thee, I wept sore and I said, Woe is me! How shall I let my father know the like of this? And while I was weeping, he who was walking with me said unto me, Weep not. And when he had spoken, he approached with an ag cd man, and a hundred men followed him, and a young man I whose age was twelve years, very beautiful in appearance, and he conversed with the master of the builders in a speech which I did not understand. And thereafter he commanded that the house should he pulled down, and he commanded the angel who was walking with me to bring me out to a very wide place. And another man came with a golden reed in his hand of three colors, and he laid the foundations of a large house in thy name, the height of each of its walls was a hundred reeds at the further end, and its breadth and its length the same. And the angel said unto him, Are the hundred reeds finished? The master of the building replied, It is not yet finished, for the wheat has not come into the storehouse, and when it arrives we will finish it. Said Andrew to Rufus, Hear what thy child says, for if a stranger had spoken like this, thou wouldst not have believed it, but he is thy son. Rufus replied, Andrew, I ask thee, zero thou true man, that thou wouldest take all that belongs to me, and divide it amongst the poor and the needy. And Andrew said unto him, Arise, take this my disciple to thy house, that he may cure thy wife. And Philemon did as Andrew had commanded, and he, Rufus, went to his dwelling, he and Philemon. And he found his wife standing, passive as a statue, her hand holding a black man by the hair, and he was running away from her hands, and she would not let him go. And he took hold of her right hand, and came with her to where Andrew was, she holding the black man with her left hand. And when the multitude saw the black man they were greatly agitated, and they cried out and became like a flock of sheep when the wolf has come into their midst. And Andrew said unto them, Fear not, come near to me and let your hearts be strong until we learn who he is. And Andrew commanded, her, to let him go, and made the sign of the cross in her face. And he laid his hand upon her head, and said, In the name of Jesus the Nazarene, whose name I preach, let thy senses be silent, and let thy reason return. And she became quiet and sat down before the disciple, and the disciple turned to the negro, and said unto him, What is thy name? And, What, is the reason that this woman hath clung to thee? The negro said unto him, I will be true with thee. When a strong youth dwelleth with a weak king and he maketh war with him, and the strong youth is victorious in the war, the victory belongeth not to him, but to the king. Thus I have great power amongst the devils, and behold, I sojourn in thy house. And Andrew said unto him, What shall I say about thee, O thou unclean one? And thy wicked character? For the time of prayer is come. But thou shalt be hung up outside the city tomorrow. And Andrew began his prayer, and finished it, and gave of the holy mysteries to the believers and he sent them away in peace. And when the morrow was come, the multitude were assembled. And Andrew was present, and called to the negro, saying, I will expose thee, O thou foul unclean negro. 
Thou unjust spirit, I will reveal thy state to this multitude that they may all see thee. The Negro answered him, Thou art not he who shall judge me, or do this thing to me. Yet my deeds are evil, for I have lost my glory, and have ruined my honor. Andrew said unto him, O unclean one! Unjust one! Hadst thou any honor? He said unto him, Thou sayest that I am black, unjust. Dost thou not know my nature, whence it is? And if it be thy will to show this multitude who I am, woe is me! What will save me from this, plight, in which I am? And he began to call on the names of the powers in the height. Andrew said unto him, Be quiet, and refrain from speaking, except thou sayest to this multitude who thou art. He replied saying, I am one of the two hundred angels who were sent to see the earth. And when we had seen it, we disturbed it, we rebelled, and we did not return to him who had sent us. And my name is Maganya. He answered him, Thy wound is great, and thy grief, and thy shame shall return upon thee. And thine arrogance shall be thy ruin. In the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ, flee to Gehenna, and do not show thyself again for ever. And from that hour no person has ever seen him. And Rufus the governor said unto Andrew, Dost thou command me to distribute all my property to the poor and needy? And he brought all his goods to Andrew and he distributed it as he had said. And the news reached the king that Rufus the governor had distributed his property amongst the poor, and had resigned his office, and he doth not oversee any of the citizens nor judge between them, but saith with that I could judge mine own self. For what I have done ignorantly. And when Seleucus, the vizier of the king, saw that the king desired his ruin and to kill him, he entreated him to desist from it. And he said unto him, If he hath gone with the good man who is one of the servants of God, who worketh miracles, who is, from the cities of the Hebrews, thou canst do nothing against him. But write to him that if he be a devotee of this faith, he shall deliver up all his goods, that they may be in the king's treasury. And he wrote letters and they were sent to Rufus the governor, and he was not found in his dwelling, and messengers were sent to where he was with Andrew, who was teaching a new learning, not the learning of the Romans. And they appeared in the street of the city, and they found Andrew and Rufus, and he was casting a devil out of a man who had been possessed by it for seventy years. And when the envoys of the king saw the wonder, they believed in God and they delivered up the letters to Rufus, and he read them. And when he heard that all his goods were taken to the king's treasury, Andrew laughed and said to Rufus, Is thy heart sad because the king is taking all thy property? Rufus answered him, Thou knowest how my heart is, and that I will not separate from thee, to whatsoever place thou mayest go. What need have I of the things that perish? From destruction they are gathered. And, unto it is their return. Andrew said unto him, All the waters return unto the sea, and it is not filled, and everything, which is put, into the stomach goeth to the dust. And while Andrew was conversing with Rufus, a voice called him, commanding him to dismiss the assembly, and to go into the city which was before him, knowing that in it there was a great community for him, and a noble and glorious service. And afterwards he returned to this city, and it was revealed to him that there would be toil in it for him, and great persecution from the king, because of the messengers who had believed, and let your hearts be strengthened by my name, and you shall learn that I am with you, and dwell within you. And Andrew blessed the multitude, saying, May the Lord make you firm in the right faith, you and your sons and your daughters to the uttermost end, Amen. The multitude answered, Go in peace, but do not prolong, thine absence J from us, for we have heard the voice calling thee that great persecution from the king shall come upon this city, because of the messengers who have believed. And Andrew strengthened their hearts and said, Fear not, the Lord, in whom ye have believed, is strong, and he hath power to keep it from you. And when he had said this he went forth away from them in peace. Praise be to God, always and forever.